Hello, guys. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? It's late. It's the Michael Lemire, 1997. How are you guys doing? Uh, why am I in this type of uh, camera view? Huh? What's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, um, let's just say this. I'm doing movie reviews again. Vlog and movie reviews. We're going to be doing it like this from now on. Because I don't want to waste time setting up a camera, turning the lights, carrying the camera out. Putting a camera on screen, doing my things, go blind. I'm not gonna deal with that for now, okay? Okay, so, so, whatever. Not doing that type of experiment. So instead, I'm gonna be doing a simple vlog review. Vlog review. Um, today, vlog review. Today, I'm reviewing, yep, that film is being critically panned. Fantastic Four. Sure, this is my freaking ticket right here. Don't even really know why I need to show you guys. I give you some opinion about it. Maybe you'll believe me from there. So, guys, this film, I have my phone right here, just the info, is being so panned. It is at. Wait. It, the, this film is so critically panned, it's unbelievable. It's at 9%. Can't see it, maybe. Wait, no, you can't. It's at 9%. Can you believe? This is this is ridiculous in my personal opinion. I don't believe that it, it um it is that low of a score. I think it could be possibly in the fifty percent, forty percent lowest, you know? And then maybe the sequel could be better also. So do I think this full of shit? Do I think it's amazing? Do I think it's blah blah blah? It doesn't matter what because everyone's gonna be commenting if they're watching this, if anyone's watching this. It's horrible, right? That's what they're gonna say. Because that's what they always say. So, what do I think? Well, it's good. It's a good film. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's horrible. I'm in the middle. I'm not in the middle of the road. I'm a little bit higher than the middle of the road. So, um, I really had a lot of hopes for this film. Because the trailers really did build up the film a lot. And I kind of like the people behind the camera. Josh Trank, for example, the director of this film, a co-writer. He was uh, the guy who did on the movie Chronicle, which I recommend you go see. It's a final footage... Uh, science picture, the superhero movie. Woo! Which, um, which one of those sound footage films that was unique in the time. I really did enjoy it. It's one of my favorite found footage films out there. Uh, I think it's one of the best, actually, out there. You can get by right now and just enjoy it. You know? Um, so, what do I think about uh, Fantastic Four, his follow up? I really did enjoy it. Everyone else hated it. Big deal, right? Doesn't matter what they think. What matters is how I feel about it. Right, so I'm gonna talk about the film. I'm, this is a, I'm doing a spoiler review, and I'm gonna be doing not spoiler a spoiler discussion and a non spoiler discussion. You're watching non spoiler right now. So, so Fantastic Four deals with four different characters: Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, and Ben Gang getting superpowers and going up against a former friend of theirs, Victor Von Doom, who gets the same power, who gets powers as well. But what happens? It deals with a realistic science fiction type of mix of the two, right? But science fiction just can never be realistic. I said you do not do what the other films did. Uh, the, the critically attacked as well as Fantastic Four films in the past. That are shows in five. You don't go into space and get hit by cosmic rays no more. We're not doing that. Instead, the film does this cool idea of doing interdimensional travel. Which Reed Richards has started developing when he was a fifth grader, which was in that uh, young. And it continues with him getting older and so trying to make it. <laughs> Sorry, um, but that's how this uh, Reed Richards encounters Mr. Franklin Storm, the father of Sue and Johnny. You know? So what happens next is they go into the, the, the teleporter. They get, uh, they go to this next other dimension. And what happens is the shit hits the fan, basically. They all get powers, and then they all show in this really good look, sci fi horror looking visor, which I really like, which really works for me. And the film goes on from being uh, a science fiction discovery story to a superhero film. Which I find it has to become a superhero film at one point, right? And I think it all works out later. I mean, the, the film is no perfect ride story wise. I mean, first two acts of the film is great. It's well done. It was well done building it up. But then the third act, 
is where the film didn't fall apart, but was kind of a mixed bag in my opinion. I like the setup towards the end. But I don't like how, and I like the beginning of the third act. Whew. Hmm. But I didn't like the epic finale of the, of the third act, like the battle. I was doing what? A little bit, but let's talk about uh, performances overall, right? Perform overall, performances in this film is top notch, I think. Miles Teller, Kate Mara, uh, Michael B. Jordan, and Jamie Bell, who does motion capture for this film, they all do a great job with their roles, even though the roles aren't really equally uh, given enough time. They do. Uh, do the best they can with the amount of subject material they're given. And I believe that the subject, the material that they each were given was well done. The writing was all nice for it, but, uh, except for the third act. Uh, Woo! Okay, sorry about that. Keep on fun. Keep on yawning, I gotta stop. I'm gonna try to hold the yawn next time. You see that face expression. Uh, so, performances wise, I think they all did a good job. Um, I think it was uh, well done with the performances. I mean, the casting, I think, was well done here. I, I did like it. I felt like it was a perfect match with each one of them. I mean, people were complaining about it could be Jordan uh, being black and being Human Torch. I really didn't matter to care. Um, is it a big problem? Is it a big deal that people must complain about? No, it's not. There's bigger problems out there in this world today that, that having Johnny Storm be black, having Johnny Storm being black is not no big problem at all. I actually welcomed it. I was one of the few people that like, oh, well, you know, Jack, black Johnny Storm, Michael B. Jordan from Chronicle, that film? Oh, yeah, I like that idea. Because uh, he worked with the original director, the director of this film, Chronicle, uh, Josh Drake. So, I felt like, performance wise, it all well done. The thing, which was done by Jamie Bell, had to do motion capture. He really did look awesome. Like, I liked how the thing looked. He looked like straight from the comic book. He, and some critics were complaining about the thing itself for that. The thing is not like photorealistic, like the Hulk. Um, that's my check. The thing looks nothing like the Hulk. I mean, yes, he's gigantic, he's strong, he's powerful, he can punch the wall, and he'll fall apart, right? But, the Hulk looks like a human being, buffed out as hell, and painted green. The Thing don't look like a human being. The Thing looks like a freaking rock that has arms, legs, and talks. Alright, that's all. So, the photorealistic complaint that critics are complaining about this is exactly that point, is I think stupid. It's, it's unfucking believable you know, I'm fucking upset about this film, because not because how the film is bad, but how everyone's bashing the shit out of it, and it doesn't need it, it doesn't need it, I, I, would, I think I understand why it's being attacked, you know, but, um, how can I say it, I'll explain about it later, but, uh, performance-wise, I can say, it's really well done here, um, visual effects, I must just say as well, all well done. I, I love all the visual effects. I love the visual effects for Johnny. I love the visual effects for the thing. I love it for um Miles, uh, the, Mr. Fantastic with his stretchy arms, stretching around his arms and his legs and all that stuff. That looks cool. The force field for um uh, uh Invisible Woman. The Invisible Woman. Uh, she had some great parts where she turned invisible or her force field looked cool when she was floating around with it. It looked awesome. Uh, Toby Kebble as Dr. Doom, I forgot to mention, he did a good job as well, he really did, uh, uh, do a good job as the villain of the story, yeah. Uh, predictable, I mean, he has to be the villain, his name is Doom. I, I, I thought they would have changed to do 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 Marion, or Doomistoff. You know, I'm just messing around with the name a little bit, but, um, they kept the Doom, I'm fine with it, they stay true to the car, big deal. But, um, why, uh, I do like how he looked when he became Doom, because it made perfect sense for what happened to him in this situation. Uh, I'm not going to explain, I'll explain it in the spoilers, not how, what happened to him, or what caused him to look away, but his, his, his the, the Doom character is a mixture of practical effects and visual effects, you know, for the visual eyes and the light on his entire body, while the rest of it, like, the way he's wearing is a practical suit, which is kind of cool, I like that. Um, um, I don't understand critics complain about that as well. They say Doctor Doom, he looks bad, he looks horrible, his power dramatic place, he's uncontrollably freaky and ridiculous. I mean I understand 
I just did, bruh, I understand that Doom, like, his powers go out of control part, I mean, it's, it's a comic book movie, what do you expect, so his powers being, uh, in check, no, they're gonna be out of control, um, uh, I do, uh, like, one scene that he has, Doom has, that really did stand out from the rest of the film, that was really special, and I think it's because, uh, the director said that he wanted this film to be kind of a sci-fi horror mix, like, he wanted this film to be more of a sci-fi horror type of feel to it, and I like that feel, you know why? Right? Because no other film really is doing that. I mean, you don't see Captain America, you don't see Spider-Man, you don't see any other film series do that type of thing where they make the, the gift that the heroes have be a curse and a monstrous design. Mm. Um, but in this film, they really just show that that the curses, that the powers are curses. And you must learn how to deal with their curse as long as possible until they can cure it. But we realize you can never cure something like this. It's a mutation in our DNA, so. Um, but what I do say, uh, I'm tired. So, don't look real though. Um, Jesus. I don't mind overall the entire film's problems. I mean, I, I have a few problems with the film, All right? Number one, I think it's way too short. I I wish it could have been a little bit longer, so we could spend a lot more time with these characters. I think that's why the film is being bashed, is because it's too damn short. We never get enough time to actually spend with the characters. Being that, though, the interactions we do get is fine overall. I do want to see more interactions with the sequel. Maybe the film will be longer. And my big problem with the... And I also have issue with the final act. I mean, when Doom shows up in the third act, the beginning of the third act, it was well done. I like how they did it third act at the beginning. The middle of the third act, that's when the film kind of went all over it. The first two acts of the film was more of a horror setup to making these characters try to understand their demons, their monstrous power. The third part of the act, the second act, the second part of the third act became a super movie out of nowhere. <sighs> God! Stop yawning. Anyways, the third act kind of felt weird as in it changes its tone completely. And I think it changes its tone completely because of the freaking studio. The freaking Fox studio. They screwed over this director and his project. Which is a true shame. Because this film could have been special. And freaking Fox. You did articles saying, Josh Trank saying that Fox screwed over this project. He's, I, I can tell in the third act. There's like definite, and there's even reshoots that are even noticeable. Like um, continuity shots like Part where Reed will have facial hair, one shot, next shot he has no picture, it's gone wiped off completely. It doesn't make sense why they have to reshoot this film, because the director said that there was a better version of this film done a year ago, wiped away because Fox says, no, no, what you see is what you get. And what you get gives us money. So it's basically a fuck you, give me money situation. It's stupid. You, know? you respect your fans, you don't hurt them, you give them crap, you give them something that's worthwhile and has value to it. True shame. The third act of so was a mixed bag of opinion, like I said. The ending, the battle itself with Doom looked cool, but I wish there was more to it. It ended so quickly, it began quickly, it, it, it felt... <coughs> the battle was way too short, in my opinion. I felt like they should have added more to the battle. And if they added more to the battle, uh, it would have gave it much more of a... Um, uh, yeah, I can see better now. Uh, it would have gave it, it would have gave it much more of a longer term of a battle, so it felt like there was much more at stake here. The third, it, it felt like everything was at stake at the finale. Nothing kind of was intense throughout the entire film, you know? And it's kind of a big problem with the film is, I don't know. I like it, I do like the tone of the film. I like the science fiction. I love the horror element that they added here. I like all of that. I just like the entire finale of the film. Is a mixed bag. I, I do like the setup to the sequel. You know, they did put a lot on the table, but they do risk like not having anything up for the next one, which is a true shame. Um, I do hope they do a sequel. I really want to see a sequel. I want to see a sequel to a lot of films, but like I want. It's a true shame though that a lot of films that I really do enjoy this year are also the ones that are getting critically attacked. Examples: Chappie Number One. I love that film. People criticize the shit out of that film. Number two, Terminator Genesis. People will disagree with me. People will tell me Terminator Genesis sucks. Well, guess what? That's your opinion, not mine. I liked Terminator Genesis, and now I gotta deal with this Fantastic Four. Now, it's not even the fourth, fourth film that's critically attacked that I enjoy, because I don't know what the fourth film is that I got critically attacked, but I enjoy it, you know? Uh, 
The three films this year that's like weekly attacks that I enjoy though. That everyone else hates. I don't know why. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And it's a true shame, you know? So, uh, that's how I feel about the entire thing overall. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, you know? That's how, that's how life is, you know? You expect so much and you end up getting little. So little. So, guys, let's talk about, uh, let's go over the things that I like on film. The visual effects, the performances between the characters, the science fiction elements of the film was great. Music-wise, it was fine. It was overall, it was not like, there was no actual theme for the characters, I noticed, until the final line of the credit scene. Um, and the performance of that is well done. Visual effects, I do like the design of the suits. Like, Johnny's suit and uh, uh, Reed's suit, they can look entirely different. There's different designs. Like, Reed's suit has springs, so whenever he pulls his things out, they come back to him. Uh, Johnny's suit has vents, so... The fire can go out whenever he like says flame off or something like that. Sue's suit though, I can't really tell anything different. It does look like a slim suit, so like she can fit into it perfectly, and her body can her, uh, her body can react with the suit, something like that. The thing doesn't wear anything. He doesn't wear no pants, no suit, net. He's just naked out, but you don't see no ding dong. Um. So guys, uh, also don't wait for anything on the credits. There's nothing on the credits. There's no little end credit scene. There's none of that stuff. Don't expect any of that. Alright, guys? Uh, so, guys, uh, final verdicts, final scores, right? I was, I was really critical, I was stuck in what to give this film, right? I was like, ah, oh, what do I get this film? Uh, I know what I'm going to give it anyways. I said it earlier, I didn't say it, but I posted a, uh, uh, a post online. Uh, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10 overall. 8 out of 10, yep. Uh, 4 plus 4 out of 10. 8. So, uh, I think it has a lot of good ideas. I hope it lives up. When the sequel comes out, when they do a sequel, do a damn sequel. I don't give a shit what happens. Do a sequel. Do a sequel. Do a sequel. See what happens out of that, and then decide. Because I want to see a sequel to this book. Because it leaves so much up at the table. I want to see more, you know? It's the same thing I want with Ant Man. I want an Ant Man 2. You know, and it's hard to get those things because it depends on people's costs. And I hope this film does well. I mean, the film just, I think it's made three hundred million dollars just to be safe. You know, because it costs one hundred and twenty million to make and the uh, plus marketing, so it always costs an extra. You know, you know? it sucks though because I wish this film does well enough to make a sequel. And I want a sequel. You know, so please give me something good here. I want a good sequel. And Fox, don't screw over. Your people that you work with, your collaborators, Josh Trek. Don't screw people like that over because people are not going to go to you then to make their films. All right? Got where am I pointing at? Pointing here? Pointing here? Right there. Don't screw your collaborators over with like this. You're putting all the blame on Josh Trank. You screwed him over out of a Star Wars deal. That's that's fucked up. Jeez, I'm sick. It, it's fucked up, you know. You don't do that to your, your collaborators. You don't do that to Brian Singer. You don't do that to other. You don't do that to any of your other directors. You don't do that. You do what Warner Brothers is. You respect them. Do what you know, Warner Brothers did with Christopher Nolan. Do what they did with George Miller. I can go on and on with the with the list of those. You know, you respect your your collaborators, and they give you great material. They will respect you. They'll say good things about you. But if you do what you did with Josh Trank here, they're gonna trash you and say you screwed up their vision, like he's saying on Twitter. Except he deletes those tweets. Because I don't know if he has to stand up to it or if you guys are going to attack him or do something to him, you know? Just don't screw him over, though, guys. It's, it's fucked up. It's really fucked up, Fox. You really fucked it up. Alright? You know, fucked it up. And that's why everyone's hating this film. That's why all those motherfucking critics out there, all those viewers, those viewers who are watching this, they're going to listen to the critics and then your friend, and then you're wondering why no one will see Fantastic Four. You're wondering that. You know? Alright, I might do three videos. What Fox, Fox leave the collaborators and the, the creators alone. Number two, I'll do a spoiler discussion, and then I'll just do this. Okay, guys? I'm done. Alright, I'm tired. I want to take a nigga nap. Alright? So, please like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook as Michael Martinez. Follow me on Twitter as M 1987 I'll see you guys on the next episode of ZMichaelM1987. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.